Good morning everybody. I wonder how many of you, if you have been outside to take your exercise or go shopping, as you've been walking along the streets, have seen symbols like this in some of the windows of the houses as you've gone along. And it has been really interesting to see that people have chosen the symbol of the rainbow in particular uh, as a way to say thank you to the amazing folk in the NHS who are working so hard to try to help us and uh, keep us all safe. And I've also enjoyed applauding on a Thursday evening outside my window and hearing all the applause and the thanks that are being given by everybody in the community. It's been really great. Now the rainbow is not a new symbol, is it? And it's not the first time it's been chosen to represent a particular group or a particular uh, idea. For example, South Africa has become known as the Rainbow Nation as a, a way of expressing the incredible diversity they have in their society. And we might well call ourselves a Rainbow Nation as we have been for many, many years now. And there are other groups that use the rainbow at different times, uh, many of them not faith groups, to represent themselves and their aspirations. I wonder if you can think for a moment about the last time you saw a rainbow. And when you see a rainbow, how does it make you feel? And what do you think about when you see one? Well, in the past, in the ancient past, people had no idea what caused a rainbow to appear. Now, of course, with the wonders of science, it's really easy to explain what's happening to make a rainbow appear in the sky. And with some kind of prism, uh, and it might be water in the case of rain, uh, and when white light falls upon it, it's split up into its constituent colours. And we can all explain this to one another. Uh, and we can make little rainbows of our own uh, in a scientific setting. There are also myths and legends about rainbows. I don't know if any of you have ever been to try to find a pot of gold <laughs> at the end of a rainbow, but if you try that, you'll find that it's very difficult to actually get to the end of the rainbow. It keeps moving ahead of you. And however much we are able, as it were, to explain how a rainbow works, there is one thing we can't do, we humans. We can't cause a massive rainbow to appear in the sky and we can't predict when we're going to see one. When it comes it's always a gift and a wonder. It stirs our hearts and I would say that it is, whether we can explain it or not, still always a gift from God himself. Something that tells us that some kind of change is coming. And for those with eyes to see, it is a sign of hope. Things will improve. Let's hear a reading now from scripture because the first time we read about a rainbow, it's right near the beginning of the whole of the Bible in the book of Genesis. And it comes in the story of Noah and you will perhaps remember that story how society on earth had become so very wicked, so very evil and sinful, that the Lord who is holy, he could just bear it no longer. We often hear that things in our day are bad. Sometimes we think that we are the worst. But if we read our history, we'll find that's not the case. And back in these early days, the Lord decided to send a flood, a massive flood, the like of which had never been seen before. And you will remember that he called one family who were righteous to build a boat, it seemed like madness at the time, and to take on board not just their own family, but creatures of every kind. 
and you'll know the story about how the floodwaters rose and the boat sailed on and the Lord himself closed the door and kept them safe for many, many days until at last the floodwaters began to recede and the boat landed on a mountain top. Do reread the whole of the story if you would like to in Genesis 6 and 7 and 8. But we're going to read now from towards the end of the story after the boat has come to rest and the people and all the animals have come out onto dry land and we're reading from Genesis chapter 9 and starting to read at verse 8 because we want to read about the rainbow. Then God said to Noah and to his children with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you the birds the livestock and all the wild animals all those who came out of the ark with you every living creature on earth i establish my covenant with you never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth, and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The story of Noah is an important one and one that we should reflect upon. As I read through the whole of the story earlier, it really struck me how many natural words there are in the story, words that relate to the planet. Rain, clouds, olive trees, doves and ravens, the wind, the rainbow of course, all kinds of animals both domesticated and wild, and all the insects and the birds. There are people, there is the ground, there is day and night, seed time and harvest, winter and summer, and there is also blood. All of these natural things are included in the story. It's an eco-story. It isn't only about people and God. And in this story we hear God speaking and reflecting on who he is himself. And he makes a covenant with the people and with the animals. And covenants in scripture, they are generally made between two parties that are not equal. The stronger party offers so much more than the weaker party. And in this covenant, God is the one who is offering everything. It's important to notice that the covenant is made not only with people, although people are the only ones who can sin and act wickedly, but God makes the covenant with every living creature. They are part of his plan and part of his promise, and we must remember them in the way we behave. He promises that never again will all life be destroyed. He doesn't promise that there won't be any more natural disasters or difficulties on the earth, but that they will be somehow limited, and he limits himself in his promise. And he doesn't only promise Noah and all the animals, but all generations still to come. And so this promise, it holds good for you and me living today and for those who will come after us. 
God calls the rainbow my rainbow and it's good for us to remember that it is his gift part of his creation and the wonder of his power and majesty and God presents himself in this story very much as a person who lives and remembers us and recognizes our lives here on the earth the way we live day by day year by year generation by generation he says whenever I see the rainbow I will remember my covenant uh, those of us that are human we need to find ways to remind ourselves of important things that we think we might forget I'm somebody who makes lists and lists and lists <laughs> to remind me what I need to do some of our friends at Perry Rice uh, if we remember tie knots in their handkerchiefs to remind them that they have something important to do for God it is the rainbow when he sees it he will be reminded that he has made a promise a covenant with us all never to destroy all life again it is a story that's full of important lessons insights and theological points for us to bear in mind when we think about it and so I have been amazed as I've seen all the rainbows appearing in everybody's windows knowing what we know about the rainbow and its meaning in scripture and how God himself has declared that it will be a sign people of all kinds many of them perhaps don't know about the Bible stories and perhaps don't even believe in God and yet they have chosen this as a sign and they have done well to do this it's a, a prophetic sign in our midst which we can see down almost every street uh, it's there as a blessing for us and it is a good choice it is the right choice for these times and it's a sign of how God works in and through everybody whether or not we always know him we Christians we must be very careful in the way we interpret signs in the world of what God is doing I've heard many people say that this is the end, that the end of the world is, is here and that this illness is a, a sign of that. It may be the case and we should always bear that in mind but we must be careful in being too quick to say that this is the end, that we are the last generation because if we study history and each of us looking into our own histories there have been terrible, terrible things done by people to one another throughout the history of the world, far worse than this. And this is not to belittle the seriousness of what is happening and the sadness that so many are facing right now. This is real uh, and very serious and we must pray for everybody who's suffering, who feels fearful or in danger. But look at our histories and let us be wise about whether or not we may be the last. And when we look at the history of natural disasters, every year throughout history has brought them, some of them much more serious in some ways than this. And so let us reflect and be wise and seek the Lord for his wisdom and guidance as to what is really happening among us. What we must do is live every day as if it is our last and to be ready in our own selves for the coming of the Lord and to do our very best to share him with others as we are able and that's not easy right now because we're not allowed to go out and meet, we can't hold our meetings. So we have to reflect and seek the Lord for wisdom as to how to share him in these times in an intentional way using the phone writing letters sending cards or whatever means it may be to share what we know the precious news of the gospel with those in with whom we are in touch this is a very serious time and many are genuinely suffering but with eyes to see we can also see in the midst of the difficulty some real advantages to this time and this is what causes me to believe that it is a sign from God because God always wants to show mercy wants to restore his people and his planet 
and to draw us closer and closer to the kingdom. You will know that there has been a drop in crime during these days, that the awful wave of stabbings among children and young people has pretty much been halted by this. And you will also have noticed that the planet is breathing deeply, that pollution levels are down, that nature is flourishing. It's been a particularly beautiful spring this year. And I can hear the birds singing more loudly than I've ever heard them since I came to London where the traffic noise is generally very loud. Did you know that birds in cities have had to develop the capacity to sing louder than other birds because they can't be heard above the traffic? And I can hear them singing their hearts out. They can sing loudly. And now that other noises are stilled, the birds are singing so beautifully. Nature and the planet which the Lord loves. The Lord made a covenant with his whole planet, with the animals and the birds, as he did with Noah, are really benefiting at this time. And there are signs for all of us here. Signs of hope. Signs of the possibility of change. And finally, there is kindness, compassion, love being shown in ways that perhaps we haven't seen in our communities for many years. We pray that these changes will last and not only go on as long as we feel under pressure. There are many who are feeling afraid and anxious at this time. There are others who are suffering. There are opportunities to remember the word of the Lord and the signs that he has given us that he is still reigning, that he has a plan, and that he is at work in our own lives. We have an opportunity to turn to him. Thank God for the rainbows that we've seen in our windows. May the Lord give us wisdom to know how to reach out and show that kindness and love that we can show in the name of Christ and not just in our own name at this time. Let me remind you of some wise words from the book of Micah chapter 6 where we are called upon to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. We pray that the Lord will show us by the work of his Holy Spirit in our hearts how each of us can do this at this time. Let us each be ready because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but we know somebody who does and make sure that our lives are firmly in his hands. Trust in the Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ. Make sure that you spend time with him today. Give thanks to him for all that he has done for you. And let us see what the Lord will do in this world. In Jesus' name, amen.